Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about portfolio projects. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, would you suggest cloning an entire site from scratch as a good starting point for a portfolio project? Well, uh, it, it, I would say this, if 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 you don't have anything else that comes to mind then yes because when you're creating a portfolio project usually i would say the uh, like the goal f for a portfolio project in my opinion at the very least is to showcase that you have some skills that you can build things and also that you have an interest in the things that you make so if let's say if you, that you wanted to clone some website and make your own implementation that's great that's uh, like uh, if you can do it well and it looks nice and you I just go for it there's not like you're gonna fulfill those two requirements you're gonna show that you know how to build things and you're gonna show that you took the time to make a portfolio project which is it shows incentive it, uh, it uh, and so forth which is good uh, the thing if I may I would suggest to you is if if you can't really think of anything, go for that because it's I mean that's it's it's a good idea. I'm in no way, I think the overall is a good idea. But try to think a little bit about building something that feels a little bit meaningful to you, if that makes sense. Because the thing is, if you let's say that you create an, your own implementation of I don't know YouTube, well the thing that you're gonna make is most likely going to be fairly uh, I mean, it's going to be a simple thing. It's not going to be a serious project, uh, very likely, uh, or maybe it will be. I don't know. Uh, but like, I mean, go uh, say YouTube is a, it's a fairly sophisticated system, and uh, so the thing that you're building is really, it's it is really just a toy. It is a portfolio. It is something that you're showcasing, right? And as I said, that's great. But what would probably be even greater would be if you created something where you have the intention of building something that is actually going to be used, if that makes sense. Something that actually has a value outside of the fact that it's showcasing something, if that makes sense. Unless, I, I will give you one, okay, we'll give you a kind of a disclaimer to that. Unless your purpose is to be, say, a freelancer, or if your purpose is to be uh, some pr uh, if you're going to sell to some type of customer because the thing is usually people buy with their eyes when they're hiring especially freelancers uh, so if you have portfolio projects the most of the companies are especially the smaller ones they're looking for something that makes their corporate website look really nice so of course if you then the best thing for you is usually to optimize for that exact thing to create different flavors of corporate websites or things that someone can go wow i wish i could have that for my uh, my business or something similar to that the reason why i talk about like the real project is because i'm assuming here and that's maybe that's wrong of me that you're trying to get into say a uh, like a, a software company something like that and software companies uh, I at least in my experience they have a little bit of a different I, I, the, usually they favor diff a little bit of different things if that makes sense they they really like it really really goes over well if you have things that are a little bit clever if that makes sense I'll give you an example of some things that like that has gone over extraordinarily well for me like every single time I've mentioned a few of these projects like I have I have a few of my own projects that are they're not advanced things and I wouldn't go I mean I'm, I'm not gonna call them clever because I, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything like that it's just that it's these are things that are a little bit different if that makes sense from uh, like the standard hey I made a to-do app or something like that uh, an example would be I was toying around with creating a uh, like when you run uh, BDD tests or end-to-end -end tests, they're usually very expensive to run. And when you run the whole suite, it takes like 
it, depending on how many tests you have, it can take 20, 40 like minutes up to an hour more, depending on how slow they are. And so I created this little like uh, I didn't even I haven't even finished it, but it's something that it's worth mentioning. Even just mentioning it in an interview has gone over extraordinarily well. Uh, where uh, what it do, what the tool does is that it takes the um, it creates a hash of the code like it runs and it's just for node so it looks it, it does a profile after it runs a suite of tests and I, I, in that profile I get a stack trace of all the methods that have been called or like all the pieces of code that have been executed as part of running that process and then it extracts out all of the identify everything that references my code and then it goes and creates a hash uh, of uh, the method invocations, like if it's a function or whatever it might be, and just uh, converts that into a hash, and then I know, and then it creates like a it creates a configuration file, which says that all right, when this test ran, these methods or, or this code was executed, and then the next time you like when you update your code, you can actually run a different tool against the files, like against this configuration file, and see has the hash changed. So if the logic changed, then I know that I need to run that test because it actually changed. And the theory, like the idea behind it, is just basically that this allows me to know what tests need to be run. So instead of having to run all the tests. I can just run the test that actually had logic uh, t uh, that was changed. And that's not a perfect idea. It's not like it's, uh, I mean, there are many things that could go wrong with it, but just the, the idea itself is something that is a little bit different. It's something that, I, I mean, no, that, I mean, even like I've had comments where they ask, like, oh shit, can we download that right now because we really need it? And I go, oh, sorry, I haven't like finished it or anything like that. So that's like, that's an example of, uh, of something that is a little bit different uh, because you should know that portfolio projects is like the bread and butter. It's the standard. Everybody does that. And it's, it's, nothing there's nothing wrong with it but in my experience if you're going to a like an IT company or something like that they want to see uh, the, it, it, it really goes over well if you're a little bit different and you show some creativity within software development as opposed to doing the thing that everybody's doing so what I want you to take away from this is that yes uh, cloning a and a site from scratch is a very good starting point for creating a portfolio project. Uh, if your goal is to do freelance work or work for like agencies or anything like that, especially if you're in like UI stuff or front end things, it's a really good idea for you to try to mimic things that will be most of what you do. And it's usually going to be corporate websites of some sort. On the other hand, if you're looking to go into a software company like an IT company or something like that uh, in my experience it's better uh, to focus on doing creative things things that are a little bit different things that are worth talking about things that uh, shows that you well you have some ideas of your own of how to improve things or do things in a better way or your own tooling maybe you can create some little library some little open source project that does something clever it doesn't have to be something big I have many different of these tiny little uh, projects that when mentioned in an interview or so forth uh, I mean when before they I even get to the interview uh, I, I mean I have references to it on my CV which shows the thing that I was telling you earlier about it shows that I have some personal incentive to do these things I do these things in my spare time which is something that in of itself that goes over well it's the it has the same value as the portfolio project it's just something that shows that hey this person is passionate or does something but when I then talk about it in uh, in the interview it is something of more substance than if I have a portfolio site because if you as you can imagine the little explanation I gave you about that tool that I made that really shows like it shows something different than if I just said that oh yeah I just wanted to clone YouTube because I thought it would be a fun project sure that's great but if you really made something useful that's maybe even a little bit better have a great day